All right. So uh, these three amazing people uh, are sponsoring the event. So let's give them a big round of applause for that. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm going to start here with Kim, with Kim Dang. Uh, we met uh, maybe a year ago, and you were growing your Facebook group, and we had an interview, and you were like the happiest, most joyful person I ever met when, when you were interviewing me, and I'm like, damn, she's good. Um, and then uh, you've created this incredible company called Chrome Boss, um, because you've built your own Chrome extension, Group Convert. Uh, and I'm a user of it, and I think everybody here should use Group Convert. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Uh, you'll talk a little bit about what Group Convert is, um, but it's an incredible software, and now you help entrepreneurs um, create their own softwares through Chrome Boss. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about um, what you do and who you help? Sure. So, um, what I do is I help you make monthly recurring income with your own Chrome extension business. Um, but when it comes down to it, it is what do we all want, right? We want to connect with our audience and we want to stand out in a time when everyone's kind of struggling to find their own voice, like for me, when I started off, uh, I was just interviewing people. I interviewed Andrew because he had a cool, interesting story. And the reason why people reach out to me now is because I have a cool, interesting story. And so in the struggle of finding my own voice and finding myself, what I've actually found is a vehicle for you to be cool and interesting. So when... Um, Ye like just yesterday, <laughs> I was talking to uh, someone who just joined Chrome Boss, and I was like, um, what if you sat across the table from someone, and you were like, they're like, oh, what do you do? And you're like, I'm the CEO of my own software company. Then there's that reaction. Um, instantly, you have your own cool story to share and you stand out, not only in the dating world, but also just meeting people face-to-face -face and networking. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, that was, that was a, <laughs> a lesson for me because I like to listen kind of more deeply to see what it is that people really want to achieve. And Chrome Boss is a vehicle. It gives you the resources, the systems. We have a team. We have developers, we have coaches inside the program to help you achieve that, to help you stand out and be unique with software, which shouldn't scare you because you're not doing any of the coding. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> so we got Taylor Conroy, who wants to pass it off. <laughs> um, Taylor uh, helps people land TED Talks, and I'll let him talk more about that, um, but just an amazing, genuine dude. Uh, that uh, if you guys were at the um, pre-event mastermind, how awesome was his talk? How freaking awesome was that? Um, I'm actually going to be a client of Taylor, uh, Taylor's coming up um, next year. Uh, so I'm going to have my TED Talk coming up next year. I hope I can land one. Fingers crossed. If you don't land one, you're the one person that we've ever worked with that didn't land one. <laughs> So, don't blow it. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> Can so, we talk about how this Chrome extension is good for your dating life? Did anyone else hear that? Yeah. We'll talk later. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> I love that. Um, but Taylor, uh, I'd love you to share with everybody uh, what do you do and who do you help? Sure, I would love to. Wow, look at the 333. Nice. Oh, trip? you're shitting me. Can you put your... Uh... What is happening? <laughs> okay, so uh, I love that stuff. So, I mean, the, the quick, and, quick and dirty of it is I did a TEDx talk in 2011, terrified. I was telling the, the other group this. I was like redneck and sweaty pits and terrible, like shaky voice. 
And the TEDx talk went really well. It was called How to Build a School in Three Hours. And it was about this idea that I had to raise enough money to build uh, schools in Kenya at the time. And the reason threes are important is it was, I would get 33 people to give $3.33 a day for three months. And that adds up to $10,000. Yeah, that was a cool moment. Thank you for that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> get your crystals out. <laughs> We, so, we live in Encinitas together, so, What's the, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're fucking Who weird. else is on mushrooms right now? <laughs> I'm, so, we've derailed. Right, 2011, do this talk, and it went really well. We ended up funding uh, enough money to build 500 schools and libraries and water projects all over the world, and the reason for that is because the one marketing, the one, the one marketing tool we had was this TEDx talk. So people would watch, thank you. People would, people would watch this thing and be like, you know, it's 18 minutes of, of was me being able to tell my story, share from the heart. I cried on stage and like was very vulnerable. And so what I found is that when people reached out, they were already ready to do business. Whether business meant like donating or raising enough money to build a school or partnering or investing in the company, whatever it might be, they were ready to go because they're like, they felt like they knew me. You know, and so I felt found that TEDx is like the most potent vehicle for getting a message out into the world and for connecting with a lot of people. So that's what we do is we, we've helped over 200 people land TEDx talks, and TEDx like in this realm, TEDx is simply a vehicle for getting a message, you know, out of your head and out of your heart and into the world where it belongs, because there's only so many vehicles you can you know you can write a book, you can do a TEDx talk, you can be on the radio, and a TEDx talk lives for like five, ten years. Right, I'll still get speaking requests now from a talk I did eight years ago. I don't know any other piece of content that, that provides that. Wow. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> so Franco and I go back to um, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, one of the most systemized guys that you'll ever meet. Um, so if you're creating an SMMA business uh, and want to systemize the crap out of it, talk to Franco. Um, and uh, yeah, every conversation I have with you, I always light up. So thank yeah. you, sir, for being so genuine and awesome. I appreciate thank you for yeah. putting on this event, man. This is insane, right? Give it up for Andrew, right? Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what do you do and who are the people that you help? So I have a digital marketing agency. When I did my little 30 second spiel, I told you guys three years ago, it did not go well when I first started out, right? I was doing all of the wrong things. And so learned a lot, hired a bunch of coaches and mentors. They taught me a lot. And then I made one of those small tweaks that, um, you know, something like what uh, Brad and Grant talk about all the time is just like the blind spots, not knowing those blind spots, right? Uh, once they show you those blind spots, then you can actually just implement and execute on the things that they've taught you. And so I did that, and then all of a sudden I became like, I was just getting a lot of clients, and with that came a lot of money, right? And also a lot of problems that came as a result as well. Had to struggle through all of that stuff for like three years, and then got it down to a science, and now we have 27 people in our agency that we actually serve our clients all across the country. I had literally had one local client in my business right now, but we've had clients in Canada and Australia and Latin America and like all over the world. Really, really cool technology we have nowadays. So then I said, this is pretty valuable. And I was giving some uh, information away and just <clears throat> some of that free content that we're talking about, some of that really valuable content. And I would literally watch on like these Zoom calls, I would give like coaching sessions and stuff. And by the way, a little ninja hack here, if you guys don't have any case studies you're starting out and stuff, you can literally use what Andrew was teaching, those, uh, those coaching sessions and stuff. And if it was, if you see their eyes light up and you see their brain oozing out of their ears, you just ask them for a video testimonial at the end of it. And legit, you just have like what I call a virtual sales room, like video testimonial after video testimonial after video testimonial. There's literally so many that people will legit just not even watch them and just say, holy crap, this guy's awesome, right? And then they'll get on call with you and then that's your, and all you did, you didn't do a free trial, you didn't have to do any of that stuff. All you did was literally just pour out the value, the information, the education that you know into their brains and they're like, holy crap, this guy's insanely valuable. And people see that and they automatically will just want to work with you. And so that comes back to the you know, full circle to 
when I used to do cold calling or door-to-door -door sales or cold outreach and cold email and different things like that, without that leverage of the virtual sales room, uh, I became a salesperson, right? But then because of all of that stuff and the value that I was pouring out to people, they started to come to me and now you can charge big money for that, right? So then I package this all up into what I call the Inner Circle Program and I have a whole bunch of agency owners that I look to start, help them start and scale a digital marketing agency to $30,000 a month over 12 months. So that's what I do. That's awesome, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> So I, uh, I wrote some questions down, so I'm not closing any deals in Messenger right now. So that's, that's why I have my phone out. Um, but I have some questions for you guys. So if you could pass that back to Kim. Uh, my first question for you is, how can you relate Chrome extensions to what they're doing out there? Yeah. So um, you guys, when you think of Chrome extensions, you're like, what's that? Or if you're like, oh, I know what that is. Well, a lot of you guys use Group Convert, so you guys know. But um, the number one thing that I have people come to me and ask is like, how can I relate Chrome extensions to myself? Um, and how can I relate, uh, or uh, how can I even have my own? So to answer that objection, Within um, the program, there's we have been researching and doing market research for the past seven months about all the Chrome extensions for a bunch of niche, 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 niches, 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 niches <laughs> out niche, there, niche, <laughs> niche, <laughs> <Love> <laughs> out there. But uh, something simple that you can think of is who uh, are you serving, and something that is simple as a copying and pasting gesture which is literally what Group Convert does. It just saves a copy and pasting gesture. Um, and you can save time with that for the people that you're serving. Then that leads to like instant idea creation for what you want to do. If you can serve your people better in a more automatic way, like Spencer Burnett, I don't know where he is, but he's like, yeah, I as a coach, I keep having to follow up with people over and over again. If only I have an app, if only I have, um, and Chrome Boss, just so you know, isn't just about Chrome extensions. It just makes it easy for me to niche down to Chrome extensions, but my team does mobile apps and Android apps and everything else. Um, and so he's like, is there a way I can save my people time as well as be able to save my own time by following up with them? inside the app, and I'm like, yeah. And you can also uh, not only do that, but license that idea out to everyone else who also needs the same time-saving technique, time-saving method. So um, as well, and you can upsell, you know, how everyone has a value ladder, and you kind of have to p get them through the value ladder with something as simple as software, it ties everything in and you can upsell within your own app um, so that they know everything in your value ladder mm. and it doesn't require a phone conversation every single time. Wow. So, yep. That's awesome. Um, actually, I have one more question oh, for okay. you, Kim. Go ahead. Um, so, not one that I wrote down, um, but I am a customer of multiple people that uh, you uh, have worked with, um, such as like the Messenger CRM, uh, messenger funnels and also social blade. Mm -hmm. I think it's social blade. Yeah. Yeah. Social blade. What are some of the coolest Chrome extensions that uh, some of your clients have created? S the cool. There's a bunch. Um, <laughs> Greg Blazer. He created one that lets you go live everywhere through all of Facebook, even without permission. You don't have to be the Facebook group owner, but you can go live in someone's Facebook group. He's trying wow. to be careful with that <laughs> because, you know, shit can happen. But <laughs> yeah, so he, um, what he's working on is like, like having that permission, but he's already sold a bunch of copies to people that he trusts that won't go live in other people's groups. But you can save a lot of time by just being able to go live on the Facebook page, all your multiple Facebook groups you do own, <laughs> and <laughs> your personal profile. So that's one. Um, uh, J.R. McKee, he did one that lets you uh, quickly download 
videos that are Vimeo or Facebook videos by clicking download. Mm. And people, there is a free version, but what I do say is that people will, you will always find buyers. You will always find buyers, your group of people to buy your, your, own, your own extension. Um, because even if there's free versions everywhere, there's, people will still buy your version. Uh, there's no lack of that. There's millions of, like, I had a question for group convert e even, how you guys, a lot of you guys got group convert through Andrew, and they're like, how are you making any money? You know, how are you making any money? I got it for free. And I'm like, hmm, who here in the whole internet space don't know Andrew? Uh, maybe millions. <laughs> and so <laughs> am I able to still monetize? And so group convert, grew up to now it does around 15,000 a month by wow. itself. That's yeah, so those are two cool ideas. Um, I have people coming out with launching all the time. Um, but the point is, it's not hard to find an idea, but the ideas that you do find cool, like um, Social Blade, where you can bulk defriend a bunch of friends and bulk add according to engagement, that's really not a new idea. You know how Russell Brunson, he like talks about funnel hacking and modeling what works? Uh, <laughs> Robert kind of told me, he's like, Kim, why would anyone pay for this? There's like six other versions, some of them are free. And I'm like, just make it, you know, just do it. <laughs> People will pay for your version. And uh, that's what happened. And now he makes over 6000 a month. He launched um, five months ago to like a very, very small email list. He literally has, at that time, uh, he had no Facebook group. He doesn't even have any funnel. He doesn't really know what that is. His main thing is e-commerce. And this is his side money, like 6000 a month, mm. on autopilot. And it's increasing every month. And he only put it on one marketplace out of the seven that I recommend. Who'd like that? <laughs> Woo! Thank you so much. Uh, Taylor, you. I have some questions for you. Actually, I need to close. Social Blade. Uh, Um, so I need to close <laughs> this deal real quick. Um, let me finish <laughs> this up. Um, so same type of question. Uh, how does doing a TEDx talk relate to our community? Uh, why is it mainly coaches and marketers? I did this at the last session. Who here is a coach? Keep your hand. And then the, the bulk of the rest are online Facebook marketers. Yes, online Facebook marketers. marketers. Yeah. Marketers of, in general. I mean, in reality, like the, if you're a coach or you're a marketer, you're doing it for a reason that's way bigger than making money, right? Like, where's Kyla? Kyla in the room. Kyla, I didn't prep you for this, and I'm just going to do it anyways. Um, how, why are you a coach? Yeah, because you went through some shit, right? And you could help other people go through less shit right, and feel better about themselves way faster in their lives, right? So, like, Kyla is a coach because she's gone through so much stuff. Can we give it Re up for her? Yeah, big hand for Kyla. <laughs> so, Kyla's a client of ours, and like I said, you, we can t you could go on, you could think about doing a TEDx talk on, like, here's how to sell more t-shirts, or here's how, like, doing something to, as a sales tactic, but in reality, that will go nowhere as a TEDx talk. The TEDx talk, the reason you do it is for a thought leadership piece, mm -hmm. right? You want to create something that I call the thought leadership effect, which is when you, people are coming to you being like, can you please be on my podcast? Can you please be on my interview? Can please, can I blog about you? Can I, you know, have me on whatever show it is? And that's what a TEDx talk does. And to do that, it's got to be about something much bigger than just your business. It's got to be on like why you're, why you're building your business. You know, like when I, or a client of ours, Kevin, he did a talk on wanting to destigmatize mental health, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, sorry. Um, I was going to be like, where's all my depressed people at? But you can't, <laughs> can't, what? We all know. Okay. Yeah. So, um, tough for him. So we got, uh, no, so Kevin wanted to do this talk on destigmatizing mental health. 
And so he didn't do it for a book deal or press or anything like that or to you know, sell more of the things that he sold. He did it because this is what he felt like his mission on earth was to do. You know? And so he did this talk on this beautiful high level thing of destigmatizing mental health. He's told his story super vulnerably and because he was like radically authentic, you know, four million people have watched that talk now. And it led to the, the things, you know, the $100,000 book deal and you know, paid speaking gigs all over the world, speaking at Yale and Penn State and all that stuff, because he talked about the thing that he's here on earth to talk about. And like this random side story, and feel free to rein me in if you want, but Keep going. this ran, random side story, when I did my first TEDx talk, the organizer said, I want you to speak about entrepreneurship. Um, and I was like, I, I'm like, great, but I want to talk about building schools all over the world. I've got this idea, I think it's going to work. And he said, it's gimmicky. He, you can't do the talk. He said the three, three, three thing. He's like, no, 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 it's kind of gimmicky. He's like, I want you to talk about entrepreneurship or you can't do the talk. And I had to like really tap into myself and go, I just decided that if I couldn't talk about the thing that was like burning in my chest to talk about, that I was, wasn't going to do a talk. And so I submitted a talk to him on entrepreneurship and he was just like, oh, yes, perfect. This is the talk. I love it. I'm, gr I'm like, great. <laughs> Threw it out. Sorry. <laughs> and threw it out and I did the talk on, on building schools anyways. You know, and chances are what we find over and over again is like people will come to us and they've got two ideas. Sometimes more, but they've got two ideas. One idea is the one that's gonna boost your, that you think is gonna boost your marketing company or gonna get you more coaching clients because it's like relevant and current and hip and people are like watching it. You think it's going to work. And there's the other thing that you fucking know you have to share with the world, like that deeper thing that's like uncomfortable you know, the thing that you haven't fully processed yet, that's, in my mind, that's true vulnerability. Like, I could get up here and be like, yeah, I went through some stuff when I was 12, and I've, now I've gone through a bunch of programs, I'm kind of over it, but real vulnerability is like sharing the thing that's uncomfortable for you to share, like right now, and that's what your TED Talk needs to be on. And what's interesting is that those two things, you think they're separate, they're actually the same thing. They end, end up rolling into the same talk, but it's got to come from this nucleus, like this heart of why you're here on earth. That's what you need to share about. And the reason for it, again, rein me in if you want, but the reason for it is that if you're on stage, like, okay, so if you're on stage doing a TEDx talk, like this gentleman maybe can see my eyes clearly, right? And if I want my talk to get 10 million, 20 million, however many views, he needs to see my eyes when they like well up, when I'm crying, talking about a trip that I did to Uganda or Kenya or whatever it might be. And the, the difference between a TEDx talk and like this talk, this talk is like for you guys, right? And it ends after this. There's no, I, they are technically recording it, but you know, the, the, it, I'm here to do a talk in this room. When you do a TED talk, it's for the people that are watching you on YouTube, on this like tiny little device. Does that make sense? And for them to watch you on this size of a screen, they need to feel all the feels that they would feel like watching a romantic comedy. They gotta feel like the sads, the happies, the euphoric, the hopefuls, the like tension, all of that. And those feelings will never come from the thing that you think you should talk about. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like they have to see that you crying, they have to see you laughing, all of the, because at, at the end of a TED talk, you're not sharing it because, specifically because of like minute seven when you learn this one little thing. You're sharing the feeling that you have at the end of the talk and you want to give that feeling to other people. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm. Right. So, thank you. <laughs> Raining. Uh, thanks. So that's that and to bring it back. I love it. That's why it's relevant mm -hmm. to, it's relevant to marketers and coaches because they're doing what they're doing because they have message to share with the world and that's the thing that they should share and then it inherently and organically boosts your business with, by creating a thought leadership effect rather than like trying for business. I love it. I have one more question for you, real, uh, real laser. Um, what holds people back from doing a TED talk and how can they overcome it? Okay, well, I'll, I'll make it super fast. Yeah. The fear of not being enough. Mm. Okay, anybody else got that core wound? Share that with me. It sucks, right? It's like before, b today I was actually really calm. I think it's because it's a panel, but before a talk, typically I'll like stand in front of a mirror and be like, you're enough, you're enough. I love you, you're enough, you're enough. Because for whatever reasons, thank you. Um, <laughs> Vulnerability is good for dating too. Um, <laughs> So, so, and I, and I do that because my core, my core wound is not feeling like I'm enough, right? Mm. And so when the way that that shows up for people is they, they 
come up with these questions like, well, I don't think my idea is good enough. I'm not ready enough. My business isn't far along, along enough. I don't have nice enough shoes or whatever it is. In reality, those are all mirrors. Those are reflections of a mm. core wound of I'm not enough. Mm. And it's re it, that fucker rears its head when you're about to do something you've never done before. Mm. Right? So if you're thinking, I want to do a TED Talk, I want to step it. That's a big thing. You're putting your, your life out there. You know? Mm. That's going to be there forever. And so that brings up that, those wounds, and we rationalize it, that wound, by like, well, I'm just my, I want my business to be at 13 figures before I do my, <laughs> do my TED Talk, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm launching the 13-figure CEO mastermind, by the way. Dude, you always try to one-up me. Yeah. Yeah. It's like six minutes. Oh, apps. that's what you're pitching right now, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's my enrollment, totally. Anyways, I don't know what I was talking about. Uh, you crushed it, overcoming the fear. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so you are enough, by the way. If you're feeling like you're not enough, I promise you're enough, and you're ready to, to do a TED Talk. Woo. Believe me. <laughs> Thank you for that, brother. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Franco, hold on, i got to close this, too. I'm kidding. Um, Franco, uh, what does your agency specialize in, and what do you teach in your inner circle program? Great question. Uh, so my agency, we actually focus on uh, webinars. So coaches and course creators, like a lot of you guys, um, we actually help you launch your coaching programs and courses using webinars. Um, so I know it's not something that you should start with. Um, Andrew is doing a really great job of like organic traffic and making sure that that thing is like, you know, dialed in first and stuff like that. But then eventually you do want to make that, you know, passive income and then get paid ads going and make sure that the thing is uh, making money for you while you sleep, right? And so that's what paid ads can do for you. And that's what we do for the webinar side of things. I don't necessarily teach that inside of the Inner Circle program. In fact, the Inner Circle program, what we do is we actually bring experts in. We actually had Andrew in um, to talk about Facebook groups. We had Grant as well in to talk about sales and stuff like that inside of the Inner Circle program. But we also bring in other digital skill sets because what I do in the inner circle program is uh, this is sort of how can I sell it this is sort of how I sell it <laughs> uh, but I tell like I have uh, two two children three and five years old and I tell them that I tell everybody that look you don't like I'm not gonna force them to go to college they can go to college if they want but they definitely have to go through the inner circle program because I know if they don't if they go through the inner circle program they don't have to worry about money again right so that's essentially in the inner circle program it's like the business model and structure for an agency and how to like be able to to, to get clients on demand, get high paying clients that pay you $2,500 to $5,000 a month in your, in your agency. So that's pretty much in the inner circle program what we do. Nice. And uh, I fully believe in 12 month programs. I think that's really where you can go the deepest and get the biggest results. Um, so if you're looking for agency help and scaling your agency, Franco is the freaking man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate yeah. that. And also with webinars, webinars are a great way. I know I, I shit on Facebook ads and webinars <laughs> all the time, but webinars are a great way to move somebody from a stranger to a raving fan of what you do quickly. So if you can nail a webinar and people can fully understand that you understand their pain points and that you have the solution to their problems in like that period of time, that helps out. That's an asset for your business that helps you so much. Um, so I just wanted to clear that up because I know, like, I always talk about <laughs> webinars and Facebook ads. Yeah. Um, but uh, my next question for you, and before we get into that next question, uh, everybody out here, um, start thinking of questions that you can ask this panel because we're going to have you come up to the mic uh, and ask questions to this panel. Um, so just start thinking about that. Um, but Franco, for you, uh, what's been your best client result? Um, for your agency and your inner circle. Thank you for asking. Um, so on the agency side of things, I was uh, fortunate enough to work with really amazing people. And what he talks about is like the paid programs, you know, like when you go into those those uh, Facebook groups and like paid Facebook groups, that's like how I generate my clients and stuff. And um, there's a lot of high quality people that already have their stuff dialed in that really know what they're doing, right? So it's much easier to sort of get results for those types of people. Uh, so I just find myself very fortunate to just be in the right place at the right time and to attract the, my ideal clients. Um, so my on the agency side of things, we built a webinar that was leading into an application funnel. And you know, to your point, Andrew, like um, in a small period of time with a webinar, it's you actually like literally, 
script, like it's a thought line. You're bringing somebody who, may, who just understands a pain point, like they just understand that they have some sort of problem. You're literally bringing them through a thought line of whether or not the vehicle works. And then if the vehicle works, does it work for me? Like an in internal false belief that they have. And then when you crack that code, you say, okay, cool, what else is limiting me from actually being successful with this thing? And then you tackle that. And it's essentially selling one-to-one, -one, but one-to-many, right? And so if you can crack all those objections within one little, like, piece of content, then at the very end of it, they're like, holy crap, like, uh, what do I do now, right? And that's your beautiful opportunity to, to dish out your offer and to get them to, you know, take you up on your course or your coaching program. Um, so on that side of things, we did a webinar funnel, an application funnel, and uh, we ended up generating over a million dollars in sales for one of my clients, and uh, that landed us the coveted Two Comma Club Award, which Woo! was awesome, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, really, really, really cool. Very, very grateful to be a part of that team. And um, then on the inner circle side, um, I would say, like, can I share two? Yep, I'm going to share two. <laughs> uh, a couple different things. Um, so the one guy is just, like, the guy is blowing up rapidly. He literally just started in the middle of July. And in a month and a half, I got a video testimonial from him that he said, like, look, I had zero clients before I started. I watched Inner Circle Content Portal. I talked to Franco on Voxer. And, like, because I gave that one-on-one -on -one access to me through Voxer. And, uh, you know, a month and a half later, he got four clients making under $17,000 a month, right? And so that right there is a month and a half into the program, and it's a 12-month program, right? So it's really cool. So he is definitely going to break through that $30,000 a month. Uh, but we have somebody else that came to us that were a little, already like a little bit up there already. He already was making a good amount of money, had 10 in-house employees, had nine clients. Um, we got him to 16, um, probably within four months, and then he set up his agency on autopilot started up another business venture, literally with the systems and processes that he learned inside of the Inner Circle program, another video testimony where he le legit says that, and that business venture is now at $50,000 a month. So, um, so wow. yeah, so that's Inner Circle and, uh, and the agency side that's of things. awesome. Thank you. All right, in the sake of uh, playing full out and getting your questions answered, if you guys can stand up, go to the mic, ask questions, uh, we will try to answer as many as possible. Um, and cool, we have that mic flooded. So Mario, we'll start with you. All right, uh, so this one's for Kim. Um, sure, hello, hi. hi. Mario. Um, so my question is, like, how intricate can you get with a uh, like a Chrome, ex Chrome extension or like something that you can plug into a funnel that attaches to a Google Sheet and kind of w plays back and forth, like plugs in numbers from here, takes it there, calculates it, bring it, brings it back. Mm -hmm. Do you know if that's possible? Yeah, so the crazy thing, and by the way, I wanna fix a mistake. Uh, instead of kimcdang.com, it's actually appcos.com that I should put in there. Okay. Sorry, Mario. <laughs> All good. But um, <laughs> so the cool thing about Chrome extensions, you guys, is it harnesses the power of multi-million, billion-dollar websites. So like one of my um, students, um, Andrew Guyquad, he took Facebook and then he transformed the Messenger platform into a CRM. So in terms of like, oh, what data can you manipulate, what you can't manipulate, as long as it's on the site and it's public or even private data, as in like HTML, the code in the back, um, Chrome extensions can manipulate and take that data and put it somewhere else. Again, I said it's very similar to a Zap. So another client of mine, he's actually creating a Chrome extension that helps Facebook ad agency communicate better to their clients by taking that dashboard on Facebook ads that has all the details to a Google Sheet where the, you know, the return and the cost per click and everything is very clearly shown in a Google Sheet so that he doesn't have to go and form these meetings or make up these, you know, just work a little bit harder to communicate to his clients that, hey, I'm doing a good job for you, you know. So, so you can do all that in like real time, basically. Yeah, and the That's scary sad. thing is um, uh, earlier last year, uh, Chrome extensions runs on Java. I don't expect you guys to know any of this, but um, it also means that there's AI technology involved with it. So the really the sky is the limit with Chrome extensions because you don't have to spend like hundreds of thousands of dollars to make these, but 
there you create anything for like a few hundred to just a couple thousand and you're harnessing the power of existing websites that's already there mm. and you're making it your own thank that's you cool. awesome. thank you for thank asking oh <laughs> uh, we'll go over here to andrew hey, this question is for taylor uh, so what's the what's the hardest part about a ted talk creating it or trying to get on the ted talk uh, or the tedx platform that's a really good question um I'm glad we talked before the session and made sure you asked it. Um, <laughs> I'm totally joking on that one, 100%. Thank you for asking that, though. Um, you know what? Landing the talk itself, we, it's, it's dialed. It's a system, right? Like, that's how we've helped 200 people land TEDx talks. And like, I've done four of them myself, and I started seeing this a bit of a pattern in how I was getting selected. And I started, I helped, Kevin was the first guy I helped. He's the one with four million views. And we started just dabbling with helping people. It's a system, it's, it's a combination of high quality applications that have been created by TEDx organizers so they stand out to TEDx organizers and high, high quantity. Like to be honest with you, we, we have a, a client who also has four million views. She just broke four million views within the last week in four months. It took 108 applications for her to land that talk. Uh, isn't that crazy? We have clients that have, I mean, Joey, where's Joey sitting in the back? Joey landed two, two talks within seven applications, yeah. <laughs> right? You! Woo! And, and so there's, sometimes there's kind of like no rhyme or reason, but the system works. Sometimes like Andrew, maybe 400 applications. I don't probably, know. Probably, probably. Um, you could have set a record. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Going for it. You know? And uh, so that, it's a system, it's going to happen. Average amount of time that it takes is three months. From like today till you've landed as in confirmed as a speaker is three months. Then it's an average of three months till you're on the stage. Okay? So 90 days till it's like you're confirmed and then 90 days till you're on the stage on average. And then writing the talk, that's where a lot of people's stuff comes up. You know, that's why we do coaching for it and group coaching and help people in the architecture of their talk and make sure that they're on pace to get their talk totally dialed before they give it. Because you want, with a TED Talk, you want to have it like happy birthday memorized, right? Everyone knows what that means, right? Like you, you could be on whatever, wherever, and sing happy birthday, right? Because you know that song. That's how your TED Talk wants to be that, that memorized. And so what I find is that people get in their own way because they start trying to think about what's going to get the most views, what's going to you know, impress people the most, what's going to make me sound the most, whatever it is. And in reality, the thing that they need to be talking with this rather than this, you know what I mean? Like the core has to be heart, then bring in the logic and the research and the anecdotes and all that kind of stuff on top. Because like a, a TED Talk is a compilation of stories, right? Whether it's seven or nine or 12 or whatever, it's a compilation of stories. And each of those stories has to be super, super potent and have very in a lot of intention behind it and get the result that you want to get on it. So you can take people through an emotional journey I'm rambling again, but thank you for the question. Oh, man. Awesome. Thanks for the answer. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, my name is Isaac, and this question is for Taylor. How do you know when you're ready to begin the process of putting in applications and working with you to begin doing a TED Talk? Because um, I feel that I do want to do it, but it feels like a one-day kind of thing. Like, I feel like it's a far off. Kind Anybody of else like, feel like know? that? Like a one-day thing? Yeah. Yeah, so um, I'm going to be really Encinitas right now and talk about <laughs> femininity and masculinity. So what, what I love about that is like right now, you're in this space of like, yeah, I want to do it. And, and the ideas are coming together. And you're probably like percolating on a couple different things and thinking, maybe I'll probably do it on that. It's a very feminine, receptive phase, very creative phase, right? Is this offensive? OK, so no. and is this turning anyone on? And so. Yeah. The, it's, it's a very receptive phase, and once you once you decide that you're going to do one, like the decision is made, things start to come into alignment way faster than you thought, right? Like the thing that's actually holding you back from starting is that you haven't started yet. Does that make sense? Yeah. The thing that's holding it back from all coming together in like this succinct line, very clear, focused, more of like a masculine kind of thing, is when you have a deadline, all those creative energies come together. Does that make sense? Yeah. So okay. my, yeah. my suggestion is if it scares you to do a TEDx talk and you have something that you feel like, oh, I need to share this with the world. Like, here's the thing. If you were going to die next week, if you, were gonna you knew you were going to die next week, 
would you, or you died or, or sooner, would you regret not sharing with the world all of the experience that makes up you and gives you that message? Like, would you, would you, re, would you regret it if you were to die? Absolutely. Thank you. If you said no, that would blow the whole thing. <laughs> right? <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> well, then, die. Um, nope, I'm cool with it. Yeah. So that's, that's the yeah. thing. Is like, I mean, I don't need to go into the whole, like, we don't know what's going to happen and all that kind of stuff. But, like, you're here for a reason. You came up to that mic for a reason. You have a message inside you for a reason. And it's to share it with other people. So it's like, if you know that other people, like they said the other day in the, in the crew, in the meeting in the other room, is that like, what's bigger? And I'm not saying it's your, your fear. Maybe it sounds like maybe like procrastination or a one day thing, but for a lot of people, it's fear. They're scared of it, right? And so like, what's bigger, your fear or your message? Got it, cool. Sweet. Oh, that was so good. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm enrolled. Uh, Luz? Yes, so this question is for Franco. So uh, I'm sorry, what's your name? Luz. Luz. Yes. I love it. Uh, so in the next couple of weeks or three weeks, I want to la launch my first webinar. So awesome. for webinar newbies, what are your, like, your best practices in terms of what we must do to, to do it well? Or, or, or what are the things that we shouldn't do? Just like, I'm, get I'm getting ready. I'm like, you know, watching the course that's coaching me, but I'm just like, ah, it's the first webinar. Um, okay, so do you mean like the actual running because uh, you know remember Avery's webinar from hell like example right like the actual day of the webinar actually performing or do you mean like you know crafting it uh, I mean um, just sort of success metrics to make sure that by the time that I'm on the webinar all the things are lined up for it to be a great webinar yeah okay um, so real quick rundown as much as I can like bring out of my I'm gonna brain dump on you real quick uh, so first thing is, okay, so the webinar, right, the end goal is that you want to convert, right? So you want to convert a per percentage of the room, okay? But there's all these other things. It's not just the webinar itself. There's, there's a pre-frame going into it and all those different things, all right? So if you're doing organic, you do organic or you could do paid ads. But essentially, it's a pre-frame. you got to think of it like um, at, if at the end of the webinar you want a certain amount of people to convert, then there's a lot of weight that needs to be lifted there. If you're, if you're doing a course, it could be a 997 course, a 1997 course. If you're doing a course like that, that means they're literally going to pull out, after having spent an hour with you, literally or more, literally going to pull out their credit card and, and put 997 on or 1997 on, and that's a big ask, right? And so your entire process up leading up to that point, I call it the money flowing river, right? Like there's barriers that are stopping the money from flowing. And once you are able to distinguish where those barriers are in the entire sales process, and you can, you can focus your energy on knocking all of them down, then the money will flow freely, right? So what happens is that we get stuck thinking that it's a certain area when it's not. That, might, that barrier might already be knocked down, but for, for instance, like we're all the way over here and you know, the, the sales message is wrong or the external false belief is wrong or, or some component of it. So thinking through all of those different um, steps in the entire process instead of just like, oh, I, I was just a bad presenter or, or uh, you know, like um, it wasn't, I didn't target the right people correctly and all those different things. So. Um, so again, I'm just gonna try to try to condense it. But first thing, just on the webinar itself, it's like you need a strong hook to get them to actually want to watch it, right? In the first like you know three minutes or so, you need to completely capture their attention, right? Using analogies and stories, okay? Facts tell and stories sell, okay? So whenever you use just facts and stuff and just saying like this is why you need to, or you're you're telling them how to do something instead of that they should do it. Right, like that's what they want to know. Is like, what should I do? And then you're gonna you're gonna shatter all these objections throughout their entire webinar. And then at the the offer stage, whenever you go to pitch it, then at that stage you're gonna give them the the solution that tackled every single objection they had up until that point. Right. So if you can master those things, the sales message and the offer, and the offer is much more important than the sales message itself because. If you have a bad salesperson, right, he can sell an irresistible offer, right? But if you have a bad offer, the best salesperson in the world can't, right? So you want to focus on the offer first and then wrap, like, all the objections that they will have around the offer and then map out your sales message after the fact. I don't know if I answered your question. I'm just, like, doing <laughs> So I think a big fear that I have is, like, I show up to the webinar and there's, like, two people. Yeah, that's a huge fear. <laughs> Absolutely. I, you know, I have a fear that sometimes when I, oh, I do like a mission post or I do like Andrew's like different things like that, I'm going to post it and everybody's going to be like, I don't care. And then nothing, no engagement, nothing like that. Yeah. So does, um, does that ever happen? 
What? That nobody cares after you post it? Not, no, not, not yet, I suppose. I mean, <laughs> so, sometimes, I guess, if the content I'm is bad or something like that, yeah. but, like, no. For, no, it usually just works. Yes, yeah. just do it. Yeah, right? exactly. And so you launch in perfectly, right? Like, 100%. Yeah, so you got, you got to be able to go over that because um, you remember, like, okay, so... I always use like a rocket ship analogy, right? So like, when ma imagine when NASA, NASA was like building their first rocket to go into outer space, right? And that thing just launched and just successfully complete the mission. No, that thing blew up, right? But did they give up on space exploration? No, right? They just got the data and say, okay, what blew up and what was the reason why it blew up? And then went and fixed those reasons so that it could launch actually successfully. So until you actually launch, you won't get the data that you need to be able to have a successful launch. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> the AV team's like, stop dropping our mics. <laughs> um, JC? Hey, um, so this isn't necessarily a question. Um, I had the pleasure of hearing Taylor speak at another high-level uh, high mastermind like last year, and I just wanted to advocate super quick because I think it's important that we talked about um, not just creating the, um, your talk but also the landing of the talk. But there's also an element that they have incredible support, and he showed us some frameworks and kind of like not necessarily hacking virality, but he supports in the distribution and kind of those, um, those frameworks as well. And I feel like half of the time we hear numbers and we're like, wow, that's really cool, but like, are those numbers going to work for me? So I don't know if there's anything that you want to touch on on that, but I thought it was a really important element of your support and really making sure that people feel held through not just like the creation and the landing, but the follow through and ultimately the return on the impact. So. Thanks, JC. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Yeah, that was well done. That's viral. Um, yeah, I mean, what's going to get you from, I'll, I'm going to be really quick here. What gets you from zero to 10,000 views is very different than what gets you from 10,000 to 100,000. It's very different from 100,000 to a million, right? Like one of our clients, Cynthia Thurlow, she's one of the ones with 4 million views. She had 100,000 views the first day. She had 4 million views within the four, first four months. I had very little to do with that, aside from like helping her with the title and the content of the talk, which is obviously very important. But she did a talk called Intermittent Fasting, colon, Transformational Technique. Intermittent Fasting, Transformational Technique. It was something that people were searching for a lot. And it completely exploded her company in a beautiful way. And that, that happens every once in a while, right? Kevin, who's also got 4 million views, that was a strategic step-by-step -step system that we went through. It's like, how do we lev leverage the close social circle? Then how do we reach out to the low-level influencers and, and some lo low-level sites? Then, how, then once we've got some credibility, then how do we reach out to like Upworthy and BuzzFeed and Elite Daily? And it was Upworthy that just like really got a massive explosion in his views. Then how do we get that on TED.com? Right, because once you, with the TEDx talk, if you get some really solid views with it, it shows that people want to watch it, want to engage with it, and you have a high likelihood of getting on TED.com. And that's where Kevin's four million views are is on TED.com. So we have a very specific system from like A to Z. If if someone wants views, that's simple. Follow these steps, you get the views, right? And in reality, what's a little bit more complex is like how do you leverage that TEDx talk to get paid speaking gigs, to get other stages that can like boost your business. And that's stuff that's also included, but it's a little bit harder for me to kind of go into the intricacies. Uh, awesome. And I think I'm probably done talking now, but um, I was going to say, you guys, if you'd like, Joey runs our team of TEDx experts. Can you stand up, Joey? Could you stand up? Joey, you're so handsome. Um, <laughs> Joey, Joey runs our team of TEDx experts, and what we do, those people do, is, is they will hop on a call with you. Where's the gentleman who didn't know if he was ready or not? Yeah, so th we have a team. That is the question that 99% of people ask, right? So we put together a team of people that are not salespeople. The, all, they're, they're TEDx experts. One of them uh, works for the largest content distributor in, uh, on Facebook. So she like, does viral videos. That's all she does, and she's a TEDx organizer. So you talk to his team, and there's, so you got TEDx organizers, viral video creators, and their job is to tell you if you're ready. They're going to be the first ones to be like, you know what, you're going to want to think about this a bit more. And do you mind if I do the phone number thing, the text thing? Yeah, we'll do it twice. Uh, oh. So you can do it right now, and then we'll cool. do it at the end. So if you want to talk to a TEDx organizer, like someone who they pick speakers, then you can text 555-888. Five 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 eight eight eight. Um, five five five. That's the, the three phone number. Three fives, three eights. Thank you. Yeah. And then the phone and the the message <laughs> is Andrew. Just type in Andrew, and a calendar link will pop up, and you can talk to. That's Gabby, who I'm talking about, who's a TEDx organizer and a viral video um, distributor. 
um, yeah, and hop on with them and see if you are ready. And then after that call, you'll feel into your body if you are indeed ready or not. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Jonathan. Um, is it on? Okay. So uh, I'm super uh, really grateful for you guys, all of the value you guys shared. I learned a lot just standing here on my phone. That's what I was doing, taking notes, like a good boy, right? <laughs> but my question is specifically for you, Kim. So when it comes to creating a Chrome extension, what's the number one or the several obstacles people are going through to create their Chrome extension? Hey, Jonathan. I know your name now. Oh, okay. Jonathan, actually, he was like, what's my name? And I had to look at his tag. And then I looked up, he's like, you don't remember my name. <laughs> so now I know. Um, the number one obstacle for getting a Chrome extension idea or getting a, or just Chrome extensions in general? No, I feel that there's, um, I mean, just like everything you have, multi it's like a funnel, right? There's a bunch at top, and then eventually it's going to slim down when you get like two ideas or three. But for me, it's like, what is the biggest struggle? Like getting somebody to code it, somebody, like I have ideas on what I would create as a Chrome extension, mm -hmm. but the thorough creation, like straight to the point, building that thing out those, oh yeah, like yeah. Those I don't want to make it super simple but it it is pretty much a very make it simple, super simple process yeah. yeah okay so someone comes into my program the first thing is that we do a call and we make sure that we hone in on the idea we make sure that it's marketable and that people will actually want it and then we do have a, a Chrome bus market research blueprint in there and then the next thing that you do, it, we actually connect you with at least three developers who are vetted, who will go and start working on your Chrome extension idea. And literally, I had someone, his name is Damien Menu. He came into my program and he released the Chrome ex two Chrome extensions within like four days. And I was like, what? <laughs> But you can just map it out on like a napkin, or um, I have other ways. If you want to make it complicated, you can. There's wireframing, sketching. But you could tell the uh, developer, hey, this is what I want. And um, what I encourage is I want you to start smashing credit cards as soon as possible. So <laughs> I want you to release the Chrome extension with a minimum viable product, which is like two or three features that people are like, I want that. That's something I want. Like with Lan, Lana, she's my Chrome Boss Elite student right there. Say that. Yeah. Woo. Her, she got into my program. She's like, Kim, I don't have, she, she's like, I have all these ideas. I'm like, those ideas? not gonna work. <laughs> and so we set her up on having a Chrome extension where it lets you um, tap into the Instagram market. Because what her Chrome extension does is it will go into a profile, see everyone who liked and commented but are not a follower of all those posts, and then push it to a list where it will easily let the agency, the people running Instagram agencies, no, okay, these people like and comment but are not followers. The, they're the easiest to convert. The way we found out that idea is just to talk to a few agency, Instagram agency owners. And one woman, her name is Sarah Cash, she's an Instagram agency person. She's like, this is what I want. I want to convert non followers into followers. I want to increase followers. You know, it's kind of like I want to get leads. I want to increase followers for my Instagram uh, person. And so, we're like, how do you do that? Oh, well, you know, yeah, all these people like and comment, and I have to do that manually every time. I have to figure it out every time. And we're like, what if we can automate that process? And she's like, I would subscribe to that right away. And so it's just, it's just asking the question to these people, like, what is it that will save time? Because when you can monetize time, literally, it's limitless and you have the whole internet to subscribe to. Uh, who will subscribe to you? So just to rein myself into your question, the process is not a complicated process. It's very simple. It's ask people what they want, kind of like Jeff, the ask method. <laughs> ask people what they want, give it to them, and what's more is that if you're connected to any influencers who already have an audience, like um, another client of mine, he, I already know the owner of the Facebook Ads Rockstar group. And so uh, we just made a post and we had 79 people saying, yes, 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 this is something I like. And the owner was like, let's launch it together. So his group has 28,000 Facebook 
ad agency members. So how easy it is for you to get subscribers to your idea if you launch into the audience that says yes to you with their leader, you know? And Robert, when he hit 2,000 a month, he only had 130 subscribers total, 130, 2,000 a month, passively every month. And within a few more months, he had like 400. That's breaking 5,000 a month on a very passive scale. So when you ask yourself like, oh, is this a complicated process? You know, like what do I have to do? Just think of it. You just have to get a few hundred people in the entire world to start <laughs> collecting subscribers. And instead of you spending the rest of your life paying like a million different websites, all their, you know, active campaign, convert kit, you guys are marketers, you know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> you flip the script and now you're the one collecting subscribers. You're the one amassing that fortune. I read an article the other day about Canva. You know, who here uses Canva? Yeah, who here uses the free version of Canva? Yeah, who here uses the paid version of Canva? Okay, very few, right? Their company is valued over $4 billion. So they are billionaires, the co-founders of this company. Most of us use the free version, and we're like, you know, how is Canva making money? Yeah, right? <laughs> Billion. So the process can be simple. The important thing is to get started. When is the, first, when is the best time to plant a tree? You know, your tree. 20 years, 20 years ago. When's the next best time? Yeah, no. Now. Now. Yeah. So yeah. And um, can I say where to go to? For your gift? Yeah. So, we'll do it twice. so um, if you go to appceos.com, it's actually a link to my bot just for this event. Um, you will get entered into uh, the giveaway, the ten thousand dollar program giveaway that I have. But Ooh. more importantly, more importantly, it'll lead you into um, the deal I have going on that ends midnight tonight. Um, we're actually restarting like an eight week program for just, okay, we hone in on your idea, we get it made, we market it, we get the whole thing going for you, and you can do it concurrently with what you're doing right now. Because if you have a course, if you're a part of a coaching, if you have anything, having like software tips people over the edge. It's like with a course, they're like, oh, I got to see all these modules and watch all these things and do all this process. But if it's like, Oh, you have that software with the course? Okay, I'm gonna get it. Which is what actually what happened with <laughs> Andrew's GGMB. A lot of people are like, okay, I got his course, can I, where's Group Convert? Where is it? You know, that's the that's the messages I get from people who come into his program. <laughs> but um yeah, I hope I answered that question. No, it for did, you. yeah. You answered awesome. a lot more questions that I didn't know I even had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Cool. Uh last question over here, Alex. But um, I see an opportunity to serve Andrew, and he's served so much over this weekend. So I just wanted to um, serve you, and that is this: you today at our at our um, lunch that we just had said something about your process. You make a two-step post, which is like, "Hey, I have this cool thing," and uh, comment down below if you want it, right? Mm -hmm. And you actually have your VA Tasha or your mm -hmm. executive assistant Tasha go in and comment manually for you. Mm -hmm. I happen to know that Kim Dang has a student named Zeki Ahmed who just developed an app that is going to solve that problem for you. Tasha's never going to have to comment again. <laughs> so Zeki uh, has created something called Comment Funnels, and I'd love Kim Dang to actually take a minute to talk about that, because you're probably the best person to talk about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love answering these questions, um, because it, it gives you awareness of what Chrome extensions can do. Uh, you know how value posts are like, not value post. Who wants this thing? And then like a hundred people comment, yes, yes, me, yes, me, I want it. And those are all leads. Those are all your tribe of buyers, right? And um, instead of you entering in and having a VA go one by one, comment funnels can actually do that automatically for you. Yeah. And it's, it's, awesome. it's brilliant. It's some, it's brilliant. It solves one problem, the problem of time. But again, you're monetizing time. And Zeki, he did $7,000 on his one and a half week of pre-launch. Um, and then now he made a post that's like, 
who wants two weeks free? What does that translate into? 14 day free trial. So it's like, who wants the 14 day free trial now? Um, so Zeki, he managed to solve a problem that a lot of marketers, uh, that a lot of people have when they're trying to grow their group and trying to launch their offers. And uh, it's amazing to see his journey because he told me, he, he thanked me, he's like, thanks Kim, because I've been doing affiliate marketing and I've been offering other people's products and like working, you know, who here feels like they're working to make other people some kind of money, like whether it's affiliate programs or, you know, agent, their clients, which is good, good, good to have clients. But it's like, this is your own asset. And he told me for the first time, he has his own stuff where now he has his affiliates for something as small as just solving this yeah. one problem for, you know, n now he can solve it for thousands of people. Awesome. So thank you for that question. You're very Alex. welcome. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I've uh, we brought these three badasses in here and uh, other sponsors um, to service you guys. Uh, not everybody can get into the seven figure CEO right now, but we wanted to make sure that we have other things for you that might be uh, more called to what you want to do. Um, and I know I'm going to be a client of Kim Dang's, I'm going to be a client of uh, Taylor's, and uh, I, if I had a time machine and I was still growing my agency, I would be a client of Franco's. Um, and I would love to join a 12-month program with my agency when I was first starting out my agency, where I had my first few clients. Um, it's just hugely impactful. Um, so, uh, Talk to these guys. We're going to go into a break in a second here, but talk to them. Uh, possibilities open up in your life when you meet more people, and these are some super high-level people that might be able to help you. If it's right now, awesome. If it's down the line, awesome, but make that connection on the break. Um, before we go, though, you guys have some gifts uh, that you'd like to share. I'd like to start with Franco because he didn't get to share uh, his gift yet. Um, but you have a gift. What is it? Uh, so for those of you who are not to building an agency and are coaches and course creators and are looking to eventually, maybe down the line, uh, do a webinar, um, we actually have a CF Jedi Master course, right? So it's a ClickFunnels Jedi Master, and I teach you how to make any sales funnel convert. I've been pretty good at it. Um, and so I teach you how to build your own webinars, or teach you how to do an application funnel, or teach you how to do whatever it is. So if you come by my booth, then you can actually type it, you're in that little iPad that I have there, type your information in. Everybody who um, you know puts their information in there will get the CF Jedi Master course absolutely for free. It's a $497 product, so you get it absolutely for free. And for those of you that are agency owners that are looking to join the Inner Circle program, um, we're going to give you a $1,000 scholarship into the program if you sign up for a strategy session this week. So um, for this coming week all right so if you sign up for a strategy session here at TOB then uh, we'll get you a thousand dollar scholarship if you decide to sign up awesome Woo. so and you said for coaches helping them build a webinar correct yes. yeah uh, so when we have building a webinar in uh, one of our quarterly rocks I'm gonna be reaching out to Franco for my that. man <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you buddy thank you. Uh, and Taylor your gift I am going to tap dance for you right now and no, actually, I do have some dark chocolate left from the other day. Does anyone want some dark chocolate? Can you hand it out? Like you can have, take some and pass you, it around. Taylor, do you have a booth out there? I've got a booth out there. Okay, cool. <laughs> there you go. It's dark stuff. And then, so that's the free gift now. And uh, the free gift is to talk to a TEDx organizer on our team and uh, and chat about your idea. Awesome. Period. Thank you. What? We said the text thing already. Yeah, uh, if you want to remind them of the... The text number is 555-888. The, num the name is Andrew. Andrew. Handsome That's me. Andrew. That's me. <laughs> Kim, what's your free gift? Um, just a reminder, my free gift is one lucky person will get into our $10,000 program. Woo! And Who'd want that? <laughs> <laughs> Um, just go to app 
ceos.com enter into it's a so bot that's, link that's a p p yeah a p p c e o s dot com get click get started it's a bot it'll lead you into the sequence and it'll say hey do you want a free demo um, sign up for the demo just sign up and you're entered into uh, the giveaway um, the thing that I also have right now that's ending in at midnight and it's the it's all the systems, all the resources you get on my team. You get eight weeks of um, going, figuring out your idea that really will sell and have subscribers, all the way to launching, all the way to marketing. Um, as you can tell, a lot of the, well, some of the people <laughs> in this um, conference have been using uh, Chrome extensions that was, you know, the result of my program. Yeah, Alex is also in the uh, the program. But you are going to also have access to a private Facebook group of elite CEOs, people that have created Chrome extensions and are just totally killing it with the number of subscribers they have. And you're going to be part of that community as well. This community has been a thriving, very active community for the past year now. And we are just looking to keep on increasing it. I have um, coaches who come in who are guest coaches who've actually successfully launched their own Chrome extension. For example, we recently have Nick Maridas on and he has a um, Amazon FBA Chrome extension and he has over 2000 subscribers using his and he's a guest coach. So it's like, it's very active. If you want to just take a sample of it, you know, the price point is very reasonable, it's very doable. Um, if you just want a sample and you're like, you know what, I don't want to commit to like $15,000 coaching program that you have, Kim, but I just want to get my foot wet, then um, go to appceos.com and click on Tribe of Buyers Deal and sign up before midnight because it is not fall scarcity. We are starting this week on Thursday, and um, some of you in the audience have already gone in. Um, Spencer is in, so come on in, and we'll, I'll show you this magical world where you can increase your influence, start planting that tree for the future of your retirement or you know whatever you want to call it, and maybe get a few dates, you know? <laughs> 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 awesome. Thank you so much. All right, let's give it up for our sponsors. Woo! Guys, thank you so much. Actually, I will have a little chocolate. Um, I will let you guys run out to your booth um, because we are going to take a, uh, I'll take a hug first. Thank you guys so much.